Rival House Network. And don't like the brags, I don't like the boast. They like hot butter on the breakfast toast. Watching flicks, talking chicks, they like the motor boat. Can River Man make it your check? Nope. So look at all these movies I got. Commenting like, mmm, should we watch them or not? I know they just be acting for cash. But I still got one question to ask. Like, why'd he do that? Do that, do that. If that was me, I'd be like, screw that, screw that, screw that. I'm an alpha, I'd eat through that, through that, through that. Mmm, so why'd he do that? Do that, do that. Mmm. Yo, what's up, gang? Aaron, Zach here. Walls up. BTM, we got to the commentary. Zach is particularly excited about this one because we're going to finish off the Freddy exploitation. We are going to get this fucking dream master. This piece of shit's been in our box for so long. We're going to get this piece of shit out of the box so we can fucking delete that shit. Yeah. It's going to be so fucking satisfying to delete this shit. Zach hates this fucking movie so much that he wants to get right into it and start shitting on it. So we're <laughs> t- so without further ado, we're going to do a three. We're going to do a two. We're going to do a one. We're going to do a play. Hell yeah, this is, uh, th- that intro was anticlimactic. We're, we were rounding out Freddy's exploitation, but you know what? Who cares? Because this movie fucking sucks, and it deserves an anticlimactic fucking intro. Because it's an anticlimactic fucking movie. Yeah. Well, I guess it's not the end of the series, but it should have been. I should have put the nail in the fucking coffin. It sucks because there's certain things about this movie I like. You know, I, I'm I'm the forever optimist I look at things like a reviewer would. I think I think if you're a good reviewer, even the biggest pieces of shit, you're going to find things you can say nice about it, right? Some some good things. And same thing with things you you love. You mm-hmm. shouldn't be able to dish out perfect 10 so easily because you got to be able to uh, really critique it. That title sequence was nice. There you go. Well, I've always liked, I've always thought the poster was cool. And the tagline, Freddy delivers with the, the, the stroller and the whole thing. You know, you mean the fucking uh, VHS box, not the poster. Not the poster, the VHS box, that's what I meant. Yeah, the VHS box, is, uh, the poster's different. Yeah, this is one of the two movies that only that had a fucking Probo picture on the VHS. All the other ones had the poster art. Number two had like a weird fucking Probo that looked like it came right out of a fucking magazine like page. And uh, fucking the Freddy with like fire behind him. And it was just really fucking goofy looking. But for some reason, I always loved it. And uh, this one had the same thing. And... You know, in all its campiness, in all its silliness, the Super Freddy dream is kind of funny for what it is. Even though it's stupid and you kind of would rather it just not exist if you had an, if you had the option. But I, I don't know. I'm kind of running out of things. Yeah, there's not much. <laughs> but fun fact, this movie, uh, we're watching the theatrical ver- uh, fucking uh, the, the version that's on the Blu-ray set. And it's not the uncut version because that's only available on the fucking VHS uh, of it. And uh, it's only in like an hour and 28 minutes, whatever. And uh, fucking uh, we're just counting down the fucking seconds till this is over. Wait, so what's the difference between the, the, the uncut version? What do they add? There's more gore and shit, Bible. Why did they take it out in the first place? It's Freddy Krueger for crying out loud. Is it because by this point he was so... Well, let me, I'm going to guess. Can you give me two guesses? So, Oh, look at that. Looks like a butt on her chest. Like I said, I'm asking why they would remove violence from a horror movie. That sounds really stupid. But my guess is either uh, by this point, Freddy was so mainstream from the music albums to the, the product placements and... Uh, that maybe they wanted to to branch out to they wanted to I know why they did it because the fucking oh, oh hold on hold on now I got this is my second guess my second guess either either they were either they knew their market was younger kids and they they wanted to or it was on the downslide at this point and it's like well we gotta try and we gotta try and get a wider margin of people because no, no one, what? it's because the MPAA are fucking cunts and this is around the time they started buckling down and cutting out everything. Same thing with the uh, Friday part. Was it six or seven? Seven, yeah. Same same type of deal. Fuck them. But we see. I I was gonna do that one time. We were uh, fucking. Uh, we were doing the uh, the bull rat thing, and I was like, "Hey, this is a documentary." I was gonna ask like, "What's your favorite documentaries?" And uh, I was gonna bring up like, "Yeah, that's one documentary I want to do on Cinema Enema is that fucking MPAA uh, movie." Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, some uh, favorite documentaries you think of any? Uh, I mean, uh, since we're watching Freddy, it, it comes to mind the Never Sleep Again. 
Uh, That's a dark one. It's a really good one. And I, I tried. Oh, fucking Lisa Wilcox. I would fucking Lisa her Wilcox. Still a sore subject, man, because Riverman fucking lost my video interview with Lisa Wilcox. Yeah. I hate it. That that same uh, convention where I scored the uh, Jesse interview, uh, Mark Patton, and, and who else? But yeah, that same one. It looks like the fucking drain is fucking puking on her. Yeah, it's just, it looks like diarrhea water. If it's fitting. Diarrhea water. No, but it sucks, man, because they were right across from each other, and then I did Lisa Wilcox. Not did her, but, you know, gave her an interview. I would do her. And it was a good interview. It was really cool. And then fucking Riverman, not only did he lose that interview, he lost a couple others I did that weekend, too. That just fucking into the void. He uh, he took forever on getting them to me. And then I think eventually at some point his quote unquote hard drive crashed, I guess. And I think they're just gone. So that was kind of a bummer, man. A lot of wasted efforts. Riverman shat the fucking bed. He let us down. Yeah, so he let us down. He fucking, he 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 was just like fuck you guys. And you know, look at them tits. You know what sucks is uh, that's not really Lisa Wilcox. Oh, I doubt. Yeah, of course not. Fuck this movie. Fucking uh, getting my hopes up and shit. Lisa Wilcox is just whatever. She's pretty basic. Fuck you. She's uh, amazing. No, I was saying when we were talking about uh, documentaries, I kind of pseudo watched the Crystal Lake Memories. I was kind of in and out of it, trying to watch it over the course of a couple nights when I was trying to go to bed, and it wasn't nearly as good to me as the the Never Sleep Again documentary. It wasn't nearly as good to you. It didn't stroke your cock the right way. It didn't. It didn't fondle my nuts. None of it. It didn't uh, put a thumb in the taint. You know a good documentary that's fucking uh, depressing, and you might need to be put on suicide watch after you watch it? Dear Anything on the Holocaust? What? Dear Zachary. Ooh, sounds like, a, is that about a kid that killed himself? But it's better the le- less you know about it. Dear Zachary, is that streaming anywhere? It was on Netflix for the longest fucking time. Okay, well, I'll check it out. But is it is it really going to put me in a bummer mood, man? It's, uh, I, I really like it. It's donk. It starts out, it's one of those that starts out with one intention and then something happened while they were making it and it took a new fucking direction and it's, uh, it's fucking, it's a bummer. Let me see. Dear Zachary, a letter to a son about his father is a 2008 American documentary conceived and created by Kurt Quain. Uh, should I, should I look at the synopsis? Will it ruin something for me? Uh, I don't think anything on Netflix will. Just don't read reviews or anything. No, I'm just looking at the Wikipedia. Yeah, don't don't read the Wikipedia. It'll okay. it'll explain everything. All right, man. Well, I'll see if it's uh, I'll see if it's streaming and I'll check it out. We need to get a be uh, we need a behind the mask or pff, fuck that. That's not our name anymore. BTM. But we need that. We need a revival house wiki. That'd be donk. Uh, we just have to create one. We just let the fans go and add whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, that'd probably, it'd probably get shut down pretty fucking quick. Uh, you know, speaking of which, if you're listening to this right now, as of whenever it goes live, we would have had, hopefully, a successful jaunt at uh, Kansas City Crypticon. A successful joint? We're gonna roll it up and smoke it. Joint. We're gonna fucking smoke them shits. Oh, so as of this recording, though, we haven't actually been yet. That's that's coming up though. But let's let's. Does Robert England have poo on his mouth? There, he might. Zach, we got to pretend that we're in the present. So, man, Crypticon was amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Man, how about uh, how about us catching Riverman in the the hotel room, getting fisted by that one dude? Yeah, that was me. Oh, fuck. Well, then, if I, I said we, so if you weren't the one who walked in on that, who was that with me? Yeah, you turned around and then, like, Zach, what happened? And then you realized it was William the whole time wearing a me mask. Okay. <laughs> he was fucking hanging out with us. It was donk. Big twist. Yeah, he brought those shrooms that we all fucking ate. <laughs> See, I was trying to, I was, I was going to make it go really absurd, but then I, I just stopped because I knew you'd poop the party. <laughs> Look, I don't do shrooms, bro. Yeah. But no, uh, like I said, man, uh, I'm assuming we had a great time, and I'm also assuming anybody that didn't go uh, missed out. So, Yeah, they did. They're, they're fucking, uh, you know what, too? I heard that go into it, uh, fucking, uh, it cured cancer. So if you had cancer and you didn't go, you really fucking missed out. Uh, that chick's kind of attractive. That's a plus. Um, yeah, Lisa Wilcox. Ah, Wilcox. Uh, 
Man, I'm having trouble remembering too many of the details. I've seen this movie a lot, and I, I can't remember. Besides Need for Speed, that's a good kill. That's pretty funny. It's the best kill in the movie. Uh, there's the, the vocalist from Thursday. Nah, really? <laughs> oh, shut up. No, but he, I always thought he looked like him. Well, uh, not always, because when I was a kid, they weren't a uh, thing yet. The, but yeah. He's also in this band called uh, United Nations, which is Donk. That's uh, that's one of the last truly fucking uh, punk uh, like aesthetic bands because like they have this thing where like oh they're they, they're actively being sued by the United Nations the real organization but like they fucking they hide their identities so basically anybody anytime somebody finds out somebody that's in the band they had to basically drop out leave the band and they had to put somebody else in there so that guy's not in it anymore because they found out but yeah like their first album. Uh, they, they fucking uh, they basically just took the Abbey Road Beatles album cover and like airbrushed flames on all the Beatles, and uh, like I guess uh, fucking they sent albums out and Target like sent pictures of like them and their stock boys destroying the records huh. because they have a, a no like fucking they have a policy where like oh yeah if there's any copyright shit we gotta destroy this shit. So yeah, then they reissued the album and uh, they made it the white album cover. <laughs> so I, I have that one. I wish I had the original. That was Donk. It was Donker. That's cool. They also that was that shirt that fucking the display pic I had where it's the Beatles and they have like they're flipping off. They just have like fingers imposed in front of them. Mm-hmm. That was that shirt. It was Donk. It's just- That's cool. Zach, are, yeah, see, I, we're going to talk about other shit because this movie suck. Well, it's a shame, though, man, because I I know part, I don't I don't remember your opinion on part four. I've always really liked part four. And I like part four. This one, it being just such a, you know, companion to that movie. It's a shame. You know what's funny is it sucks in comparison to the rest of the series. If we just watch this on its own, it'd probably be like, oh, yeah, that was like a five out of ten. And that, that's sad, like, oh, yeah, we, we see so many 5 out of 10s uh, today, and it's just like, uh, yeah, uh, you take it for granted. No, I agree. You got to you gotta grade things and look at things in context. So so I'm going to try to fucking like this movie. I'm going to try to give it the fucking uh, the, the commentary deserves, because somebody's listening to this like, I love this movie. This is my favorite series. I saw it first. Yeah, if somebody watched it first before any other installments, I could, I could see that. Uh, but... I could also see how it's a movie you might remember differently if that's the case. Because I remember watching this when I was a little kid, and I don't, I, from the eyes of a little child, I, I can't really differentiate like my enjoyment of one from the other. Really, mm-hmm. I can't. I remember the Need for Speed scene. I remember the the Super Freddy and the the comic book kill. And to me, it was just another Freddy movie. And I remember vividly watching the fourth one and the third one. Those were, the, I'd say, three, four were the ones that I, my earliest memories and then five and yeah. But as you get older, I can see it being like, Whoa, you know, I remember that one part and you're basing your nostalgia off of like one or two scenes is what I'm saying. Yeah. Then you watch the whole thing when you're older, like, huh? The whole thing as a, as a unit, it's not good. That happens a lot to me. Uh, Anything Mac brings up fondly uh, that I have to tell him, like, yeah, that's not very good. Like what? And he's like, fuck you. Like what? Uh, Well, it happens all the time on the show. He just had to listen to it. Look, she's got to go dosh her teeth for the paparazzi. I always remember that line for some reason. Yeah. Well, that nostalgia thing, too, uh, that that happens the most with retro video games. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I learned a long time ago that if I have some fondness for an old title, just don't go seek it out because more than likely it's not going to hold up and it's just going to kind of taint it for you. I'd rather just remember it nicely. Mm-hmm. Unless it's like fucking, uh, you know, uh, Castlevania Symphony of Die. That's a classic. You still haven't played it. I'm talking older. I'm talking older. Yeah, exactly. I'm talking like NES and shit. Yeah. Because, you know, when I was, that was when I was coming up. Well, I'm more of a 90s kid and a Super Nintendo kid, but I had an NES first technically. Uh, but those games, especially, I'd say the 16-bit era too has that issue. But, um, but especially the NES because I was so young. And when you're a kid, you'll fucking play LJN games and you'll be excited about them because it's a game. You don't really pick apart all the details on well, this company made this piece of shit and this company made this. Piece. You, this is why 
they made so many movie tie-in games because they pleased fucking kids who didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. I used to play shitty RoboCop thinking, oh, it's RoboCop. It's great. No, I used to have the Terminator 2 video games on like all the different systems and the Terminator yeah. game. And I'm like, hey, this is rad. It's Terminator. But when I get older, I'm like, first of all, aesthetically, it doesn't even look like Terminator. And it's not mm-hmm. good at all. What's funny is they didn't even bother fucking play testing shit back then. They they very often put out a game that you probably can't fucking beat without like save states and shit like that. They had nobody proofread shit, too, with all the the typos and stuff. And you can't tell me that's an error in translation because Mm -hmm. there's straight up typos and shit. I mean, Bimmy and Jimmy. Yeah. If I'm you, you know, congratulations, (laughs) you beat a very great game or whatever it is. I mean, that's not a translation issue, because if I'm taking a Japanese message and I'm an American guy and I'm translating it, I can still translate it. And I can know that, that this does not read in English. Mm hmm. Yeah, if, if, like I, I made you listen to that Norma Jean CD. That, that there's that song where towards the end it goes, "Congratulations!" It's like don't know. Every time I hear that song, I go, "Congratulations!" I, I sing it. I sing what it says at the end of Ghostbusters, the game. It's donk. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, so this this movie uh, is is a case of that. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of stuff, man, that I I don't think even movies that I think I like I don't I don't like them as much as I did when I was a little kid. Mm-hmm. Even movies that I think are still good that I just you know what's funny is as a kid I used to watch fucking movies over and over again. That rarely ever happens now. I, I can find a movie I really like and be like, I gotta buy this. This is good. I want to watch it over again, and I'd never watch it again. Well, and even the classics that I would used to watch all the time when I was a little kid, and and I could still say I could watch them all the time. Uh, it, the the amount I watch them is a lot less. So, and and in time is a weird thing. The older I get, time seems like, for example, I love the movie Alien. I love the movie Hellraiser, and I can tell you I've watched those movies a million times. Okay, so I watched the original Alien. Let's say the last time I watched it might have been a year and a half ago. It feels like yesterday. Like I'm good, mm-hmm. right? Whereas when I was a kid, I used to fucking wear out VHS tapes because when you're six years old, you know, to 10 years old or something like that. Obviously it, you don't, you're the, the, the perspective of your life is nothing. I mean, yeah. And back then you can, you can only rent one movie at a time. Sometimes now everything's on uh, shit. All, you got so much shit to choose from on Netflix. So it's like, why would I watch a movie I've already seen when I can watch every night? I can watch something I've never seen. You know what I mean? When I was like, let's say eight years old, I had probably watched a movie like Child's Play or Child's Play 2 15 times, right? Mm-hmm. Now, just think about it. If I was only, let's say, seven, eight years old, that 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 clocks in. I'm watching that movie a few times a year because mm-hmm. I'm not that old. But now, it, if I'm 33 years old, which I am, you know, if I say the last time I watched uh, Ghostbusters, which this isn't accurate, I recently watched it. But let's say the last time I watched Ghostbusters was two years ago when I was 31. That feels pretty fresh in my mind, to be honest with you, these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's weird. Is that nun fucking her with a Probably. strap on? That would be hot. They need to make it better somehow. Uh, I remember this seed being okay. Yeah, the Freddy Surgeon, right? Freddy Baby. Oh, the Freddy Baby. Yeah, like I said, there's some... There's some neat concepts here. I don't know what it is. To me, it's there's nothing obvious about this movie that makes it bad. I can't think and put my nose on what it is. You know what would have been fucking... They could have went really dark and had fucking Freddy take the baby and clip off his cock. Like, he's the one that circumcises it, and then he, like, yeah. puts it in his teeth and sticks his tongue through it. <laughs> okay. He is a baby killer. And a, a child. Uh, they do hint that maybe he uh, did more than kill them. So uh, they, they could have went full on. Fuck, they could have blown their minds. Dude, which brings me to another thing I got to say. Uh, you said something fucking dark as shit the other day. Okay, so let me let me preface it. Uh, I think I think Josh James had posted a, a picture in our private feed of the singer of Lost Prophets, and uh, oh yeah, and somebody said, "Oh, he looks like fucking Little Nicky, like Adam Sandler," and he kind of did. Is the emo Adam Sandler? Somebody, it was a, a picture of that guy from Lost Prophets, and it had a, a comment from YouTube and said he looks like emo Adam Sandler. And then I said, "Oh, that's the baby fucker." And then what did you say? 
I don't remember. <laughs> I'm going to look it up because it fucked with me, man. I'm going to look it up right now. It's pretty funny. Give me two shakes. Was it was it that bad? I I thought it was pretty funny. I mean, it's, uh, it's par for the it course. Was like, I, I got it. I got it. No, I know. Don't ruin it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it straight up. Give me a second. Dude, these fucking going through the pictures that we, we share with each other is strong. Okay, here we go. Okay, so... Okay, you posted it. It's a picture of the Lost Prophets guy, and it says he looks like an emo Adam Sandler, and then you followed that up with a picture of little Nicky. <laughs> Which is just and, an emo Adam Sandler. And then I said, that's the baby fucker, and you, and you immediately go, I thought I recognized him from the convention. Yeah, that's what it was. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought you were going to bring up the cum sock kids. Oh, that was fucked up, dude. Come sock kids. That should be a fucking uh, a Saturday morning cartoon like the, uh, you know, fucking garbage pail kids. I've been donk. I just posted a random thumbs up. I don't know what the hell. It's going to look weird. Oh, well. Yeah, the come sock kids. That's uh, interesting. Somebody on Etsy is selling these fucking uh, cum sock kids, he calls them. And it's like a fucking... Basically, they look like aborted fetuses inside of a sock with uh, semen seeping out of their mouths. It's pretty great. Oh, these are supposed to be dolls? <laughs> uh, but yeah, he calls them cub sock kids. I was like, that should be a fucking Saturday morning cartoon. That is dank as fuck. <laughs> and then I posted uh, the band Code Orange Kids and basically just changed the name to cum sock kids. Mm. It was pretty funny. This is a pretty cool... Look at his long ass toes. This is a pretty cool sequence. Yeah, it goes nowhere because you never see that again. Mm. You didn't get a good look at it. Oh, look at fucking Lisa Wilcox's panties, though. I wonder. I get it. It's a companion piece to four, but it is missing that Rennie Harlan, like Sheen, that weird touch of the fourth one. There's some, I can't really put my finger on it. That I want to fuck the main actress in this movie touch. Maybe. Apparently that was going on behind the scenes. No. Not not Lisa Wilcox. She wasn't the main actress in that one. Uh, well, actually, she was. It, the, it was a Tuesday night, right? Yeah, Tuesday night. Apparently, they had something on set with Rennie Harlan. I guess they did. He and her to deny it, but everybody on that documentary were saying, "Like, yeah, I remember that happening." See what's happening with his arms here. Yeah, what's going on? Is there a Is that like a callback to the first one where he's walking down the alleyway? Yeah, that was odd. I mean, it was almost like they were they were getting ready to do some kind of like prosthetic, some kind of effect, like rip his arm off or something, because it looked weird. Yeah. But didn't notice how shitty his makeup looks in this one. That's something else I never really took notice of as a kid, like his makeup changing from each movie. Yeah, the color palette on it is fucking off. Like, I, it is fucking weird. Who the fuck painted that shit? His mom's pretty hot, though. Why did he do that? He sees his mom. <laughs> we'll see, bitch. We'll see, bitch. He's fucking ruthless. He just calls his mom a bitch, just like that. Fucking asshole. Were you like that kid, though? Weren't you like a little Cartman? <laughs> no. No? See, I, I should have fucking... I should have saw that coming. I should have said yes. I would, that, that's totally in the Zach character to say yes to that. That episode when uh, he's begging his mom for an iPad. <laughs> and he's just throwing a fucking fit. And she gets him, like, the off-brand or something. And What'd you fuck Cartman's mom? No, she's got a... Isn't she a hermaphrodite? That's why I'm asking. No. She gets the best of both worlds. And they're a cartoon. <laughs> See, look, the, I, I don't think this is ever explained. She somehow just ended up here. I don't think she ever wakes up from this dream she's having. And it, oh, so they just never show anything of her waking up. Yeah, I think they just, the movie just continues now. And you think that's down to editing? What if the whole thing really is a dream? Who the fuck knows? Do you really think this movie is worse than Freddy's Dead? I think, uh, f for some reason, Freddy's Dead has a little bit of a fucking special place, for some reason. Freddy's Dead is a similar thing, though, where, maybe maybe it is, like, just splitting a hair here, but is Freddy's Dead similar to where... See, look, she's calling her friends now, and they're gonna answer the phone, and so yeah, she's not dreaming. It makes no fucking sense. Yeah, it's annoying. Freddy's Dead has a lot of little things that are nostalgic, and, and, and actually, I might argue that maybe Freddy's Dead, even if it's shitty... Maybe it does have some of a somewhat of a pace to it where you can get through it. Wow. And like, I don't think it's maybe it is one of those things. If, if you looked at it separately, aside from the nightmare series, it would be totally watchable. But I just 
I think that's what hurts it so much is it is a nightmare movie because it's so it's peak over the top Freddy. Mm -hmm. You know, all the product placements, all the celebrity uh, fucking appearances in it. It's just it's not taking itself seriously. And I know it's not taking itself seriously. So how mad could I be at it? I mean, they knew that was kind of like, hey, a swan song, right? Oh. They knew it was a swan song. Clearly, like, let's just fucking do it all like, like this. I don't know. She's a she's a bob. She's the one that gets force fed to death. That's pretty uh, memorable, I guess. That's good. She kind of looks like uh, I can't tell, but. No, it's not her. She looked like Chelsea Fields for a second. That's Scott Bakula's wife. Brother of, uh, uh, what's his name? Brad Bakula in Kansas City. Law attorney. Attorney at law. Oh, we should visit him while we're down there. Oh, yeah. We could go knock on his door. Why not? <laughs> we, we, could, we, we should. We should just bring the, we should do performance art and bring the skit to him. <laughs> like, come on. We, we're trying to settle a fucking bet. Was your brother in the episode with the retard more than once or just once? <laughs> That's so funny. Dude, I, we got to call him one of these. See, we never record early enough in the day to where it's business hours. Mm -hmm. But one of these days, we got to try and call him. Um, ah, fuck, dude. We have before. We just didn't get to him. Yeah. I'd love... Dude, that, that would be a great one. Wouldn't you just nut on that guy's chest, though? No. <laughs> You took a while to answer that, longer than usual. <laughs> yeah, it's not because I was contemplating. Like it. you were, you were kind of thinking about it a little bit. No, I was like, you're like, well, his fucking pecs would take the nut really nicely. I was just processing what you said. <laughs> I shouldn't have to process what you say because you're like a pull string Urkel doll at this point, where you have like four or five things you say on repeat. <laughs> would you nut on his chest? <clears throat> like I'd suck his dick. <clears throat> you know, I fuck kids. <clears throat> <laughs> See, that's the darkest one. Uh, my fucking uh, toy would get banned from Walmart immediately. Mm -hmm. Banned from Walmart. That's disgusting. See, uh, fucking, uh, would you fuck him, though? He kind of looks like Randall from Clerks. Hell yeah. Doesn't he? Doesn't he kind of have a Randall vibe? This is like the scene from uh, New Nightmare. I know you're excited for... Yeah, it is like New Nightmare. I know you're... Actually, yeah, he's adjusting himself, too, just like a New Nightmare. I wonder if that was a, a callback. I don't think he does. He just turned the radio a little bit. I don't think. He it, oh, I look. It looked like he adjusted himself a little bit. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, New Nightmare. That's another movie that I don't enjoy like I used to. I don't think it's bad. I I think it could have been so much better. But when I was a kid, I, I liked it way more than I do now. Mm. It's a totally fine movie. It's totally watchable. It's totally passable. I just think uh, it shits the bed in the third act. It has. It had the potential of being much darker than it was. Mm -hmm. uh, they, did, they did a bad fucking decision redesigning Freddy's makeup and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I get like, oh, we want to differentiate it. We want him to look... Like, he didn't make him look scary, though. Like, he looked scary in the original. He had a... It looks like he's wearing a rubber prosthetic mask. Yeah, like... Well, Latex. And, and then his fucking glove is, like, a rubber glove. <laughs> Why did they do that? I don't know. I just think... It had such potential to be super uber dark, mm -hmm. to be straight up. To, it's like I don't even know. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I just in that 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 third act with the whole fucking uh, Hans, Hansel and Gretel, that whole little art going off the whole thing is kind of stupid. Mm. I don't like it. I remember thinking the last time I watched this a couple years ago, I think on Halloween night at some point a couple years ago, I remember thinking like this has that fucking stink on it. Like whenever you see like a full moon movie and like, oh yeah, the fucking main villain, he was only on set for three days. We had to shoot all of his scenes and real quick. That's what I remember thinking. Like was Robert England just on set for like two days? For some reason, this has that stink on it. I don't know why. And it's so weird to see Freddy Krueger like in makeup during the day because he's in that he's in yeah. that 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 cemetery scene and during the funeral you see him pull. That's the only time I think you've ever seen Freddy. No, you saw him on the you saw him on the beach. Oh, I, I, I'm talking about this movie. You're still talking about. Uh, yeah, I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, but I take it back. I'm wrong anyway because he was on the beach in that one scene in Freddy Four. Right? Yeah, yeah. My bad. Here's one of the best kills of the movie. This boy's got the need for speed. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Did you ever play any of the Need for Speed games? Uh, you know, I, I actually don't think. I think I somehow evaded all of them. I never did. I was never a big racing 
game guy. I wasn't until like I don't know, like fucking middle school, and I used to just put on other stuff. It was just something to turn your brain off. So you could tell they cussed something out there. It looked all fucking zoomed in or something. Yeah. Well, I remember uh, when I first got my PlayStation. See, this that was a good effect, but they cut it out when it goes up into them. Now, have you seen the uncut version yourself? Yep, I own the, the VHS still. I never got rid of it because of that. Does it add anything to it? Does it make it a better movie, necessarily? It's not a good movie, regardless. Okay. See, look, now he looks like a fucking Mortal Kombat character. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> he looks like uh, Mad Max, like Beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> Bullshit. See, they, they should have made a fucking uh, video game, and that, that, that's the plot. You're just a fucking bad Max guy riding a bike, and Freddy won't let you get off of it. Yeah, but on the topic of the, the racing games, when I first got my PlayStation 1, I got uh, Gran Turismo 2 with it, and I got the steering wheel with it. And oh, yeah. I never really put much time in it. I tried playing it once or twice, and that fucking steering wheel was harder than fuck to control. I'm like, this is, this is supposed to be fun? Yeah, I never liked it. Like, the Gran Turismo ones were like, they pride themselves on like, yeah, we're super realistic and shit like that. I, I wanted ones that were like fucking just retarded. It's super hard. And maybe that's why I couldn't really latch to it because I was a kid that didn't know how to drive. Yeah. And because I don't know. Yeah, I think I think I, I think it was. It was more than a steering wheel. I think it was a steering wheel and like pedals or some shit. Mm -hmm. It's fucking ridiculous. And I'm like, this is this is too much for me, man. But I loved games like Mario Kart. Right. See, she's she's dreaming, but she's awake. I uh, Wait, isn't that like the thing like, oh, it's because your kid is dreaming and uh, he's inside you. So he he manipulates your thoughts. Uh, I mean that's retarded, but I guess it, it works. So you know what's what's funny is me and Mac we did a fucking E three like a year ago or the year before, where we were watching like trailers and it's it's on YouTube, and uh, we were watching the the Death Stranding and I mentioned like we still don't know what the fuck this plot the plot to this is, and like it showed Norman Reedus he's got a baby and he's keeping it in a jar or something and he's protecting it and I'm on that thing I'm like wait a minute what if the what if they rip off right at the fucking uh, dream master the baby's dreaming and uh the dreams are coming uh, like they're making the, their way to reality and you gotta fucking protect it. i'm like i call it right now if if that's the plot i fucking win and they suck because they ripped off fucking dream Master. kojima's probably like, nobody remembers that shitty movie kojima watches a lot of flicks i wouldn't put it uh <laughs> well even metal gear solid's a hodgepodge of a lot of different things yeah you know so who knows? Which reminds me, I, I fucking watched a flick, and uh, it was uh, fucking uh, Midsummer, and uh, I really liked it, Babel. Yo. But I, I don't want, we, I probably shouldn't talk about it, because uh, whenever we do our Wicker Band episode, I could talk about it. So. Unless you want to talk about it. No, nah, well, I mean, we could talk about it. We could talk about it during both. I don't really give a shit. I don't, don't, don't spoil it for me, because I almost went and saw it, but I sort of got outvoted. Um. And I ended up going to see Annabelle. Fuck me. Ah, oh, was it yeah. not? Good? Was it like the on par with the other two? Well, no, it was the best of the three. Mm. So here's how I look at those shitty Annabelle movies. The first one is just fucking ass fire. It is bad. I don't remember anything about both of them, and I watched hey, them both. The first one, terrible. I'd say it's a two out of ten. It's mm -hmm. bad. It's terrible. The Annabelle was it creation. That's the second one. Mm -hmm. I watched that because, you know, Mac, he puts that bullshit in the box all the, and voodoo all the time. Uh, and that one, while better, I'd say that's a four out of ten. It's still a piece of shit, but it's just I don't know. It's better. It's totally watchable. It's almost I, like it's surprising that movies that abysmal get fucking greenlit and made. Like whenever, like, oh, there's uh, these fucking original directors that have good ideas that we're fucking just shitting on and turning down. But this one, though, but that second one, it's it's a four. It's watchable, but it's forgettable. Like whatever, it's you'll never watch it again. But the first one was super bad. This one, I'd say, was a solid six. This one, oh. this one felt more like a Conjuring movie, to be honest with you. And it had, oh yeah, it has fucking hot check from Base Motel in it. It ha it has the Warrens in it. It feels more like a Conjuring movie, and I think it's, I think it's a direct prequel to the Conjuring because the Annabelle movies are kind of like going through like the first one's the oldest, like it's just it's, and then the second one's talking about the the fucking girl. It's weird. The order's weird. 
Like the second one, I think, is the origin and the girl. I don't fucking know. But this one has the Warrens and they're more like bookends. They're they're meaty characters, but they're at the beginning of the movie. They're in the first act and they're in the third act and the I whole figured, yeah. and the but but it's still a lot though it's pretty good and the whole second act there it's a really small story it's very contained because uh, basically they have the Annabelle doll it's locked up in their basement the whole thing takes place in the Warrens house and it's we should their, probably we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the fucking uh, introduction of this hideous fucking kid did he have a hickey on his neck oh it's the Jurassic Park kid that's not yeah. very scary. He was also in an episode of, like, Home Improvement or something. I remember seeing He was all over the place. He was quite the character actor. Yeah. I don't think it's very nice for you to call him hideous, but... He was a fucking ugly kid. I'd suck his dick now, even though he looks the same. <laughs> he looks the same, but he's got weird facial hair over his weird baby face. But it's not even... Yeah, he's still ugly. I'd just suck his dick because now he's legal. <laughs> it's not even, like, real, like, man facial hair. It kind of looks like Chaz Bono fake like is it's my facial hair yeah but anyway no the movie itself uh it's very contained very small it takes place in the warren's home and here's the whole plot uh it centers around their daughter and uh basically the warrens go somewhere i don't know if they were going to investigate something or what but basically they they had her babysit babysitted right babysat sorry uh and she has a babysitter that's her regular sitter and they leave for the night and she comes home and shit fucking goes on. Basically, uh, one of the girls, the, the babysitter's friend, she comes over to the house and she gets nosy, right? Because they kind of, they the Warrens are exposed in this movie for what they really do. And she gets nosy and she goes into the do not enter room. And long story short, Annabelle gets out and fucking they have a night of crazy possession. Mm-hmm. And they get it contained before the parents come home early in the morning. Yeah, see, I thought you were you were leading up to like, oh, this movie reveals that the Warrens are full of shit or something. I thought you were, no, because <laughs> I I saw somebody that somebody was in a horror uh, chat or in a group and they were talking about, yo, fuck the real Warrens, uh, they were fucking hucksters and all this, and I was I was I, I had to be the voice of reason. I was like, yeah, for what uh, for what you're saying, it sounds like uh, they weren't hucks. Uh, you're only a huckster if you know what you're doing is uh, if they really believe what they're doing, mm-hmm. they're not huckster. What are you talking about? It's so weird, though, because, you know, as much as it is solid enough, it's a totally pointless movie. Mm -hmm. It is. It's like even the first one is a pile of shit, but I get its purpose. It's telling an origin. Okay, it's got its place, even though it's a pile of dog shit. Okay, the second one, it's got its place, too. It's telling more of an origin. It's actually telling the the little girl, I think, that that. uh, I think, yes, it's more the origin story of the little girl that became whatever. It, it's not good, but it has its place. This movie is just sort of it take it's 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 over the course of a night and mm. it doesn't have it's just literally like, OK, make sure you get her in bed at 8 a.m. Eight, by eight o'clock. We're going to be out. We'll be back in the morning. And then they fucking get into trouble. It's like an episode of Scooby Doo. They lock Annabelle back up in the cage by the end of the movie. They come back. They, you know, we have to, it's, it's like every ADC comedy. We got to clean up this mess for mom and dad at home. And they get home and it's just like, oh, you had to learn the hard way. Don't don't snoop around in there. And they're like, okay. And then Mrs. Ward just takes her fucking top off, squeezes her titties together, and, and I jack off. Yeah, I mean, I, that, oh, yes. that's how I choose to remember it. <laughs> She's a lot older than her sister, but they look alike. Hell yes, MILF. I think they got 20, I think it's like a 20 year gap, if not more on them. I wants to do them both while fucking uh, Patrick Wilson watches. He's a handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought of Patrick Wilson because uh, apparently he's a he's a horror fan. He he was talking. I remember seeing the fucking uh, interview with him where he somebody brought up Freddy Krueger and uh, uh, they were talking about like uh, oh which which movie was that in where Freddy did that? And he's like oh it's the one with uh, fucking Dawkins on the soundtrack, Dream Warriors. <laughs> So we well, maybe we could help on a show. We could ask him like, oh, so you, did you brush up against her titty ever? I think that would be really cool if, um, you know, someone like us, we were ever in some sort of, we were ever at some sort of status or, and we could be these people that didn't fucking shun horror movies. Like, no, man, horror movies are great. It'd be great oh, to be yeah. this, this, uh, you could be Zach, you'll never be president, but let's say you're president of the United States. You could be like, yeah, man, fucking nightmare on Elm Street five is not good. 
right? Hey, I, I, I'm going to run for president, baby. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, why the fuck do we not have high-speed rails yet? Think about it. I could be over at your house fucking three hours flat, baby. And then I was like, well, I know why we don't have it, because of the fucking fossil fuel industry. And then I'm like, I got to be president. So fucking vote for Zach. Now, are you talking about uh, something equivalent to like bullet trains in Asia? Hell yeah. Dude, I, I took this crazy ass fucking train from Tianjin to Beijing. And that was normally like a three hour drive. I got there in fucking 20 minutes. That's fuck a dog. Dude, and you look out the window. I mean, there's like things that were covering the windows, but if you wanted to peek uh, peek uh, under them, dude, it was like a blur of light. It was crazy. It was really neat. <laughs> dog. Yeah. Here's the scene, baby. How much money do you think that would uh, cost? Oh, here we go. If I could, uh, we're going to build bullet trains uh, within the next three years. Three years, baby. We're getting up quick. We're just not... Uh, we're just not a, a country suited for those, you know. We're just such a we, we rely so much on automobiles, and I don't think we have the space. We're an auto places in 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 Asia. They're so crammed together, and they have such a big population density. And you know, it totally makes sense that they would use trains and not rely on on automobiles. But you know, we you kind of. So what you're saying is we got to overpopulate the country first, and then we can think about it. Yeah, maybe. Bon appetit, bitch. That that baby doll, is that supposed to be scary looking? It looks like a doll. Yeah, it's weird, but for some reason, I always remember this scene, and I always remember, like, he's fucking cutting out of a doll. Like, what, is, what does that even mean? It's, it's really weird. I don't, is it supposed to be a doll, or is it just shitty effects? It looks like it's... For some reason, whenever she sees her later, she kind of resembles that doll, so I don't know what they were getting at. This is a weird scene. See, that was really short, too. They cut out quite a bit here. And just of food stuffing into her mouth. It's like, that's not fucking gory. Does her head explode? I can't remember. Um, I, yeah, I don't remember. No. She sees her later, so he, he doesn't completely kill her. Or maybe she... He, it might be coming up. Yeah. She, she sees him in the fridge. Oh, man. What if Leprechaun was in there smoking a bong and eating a stick of butter? Hell yes. Oh, did we just see fucking uh, claymation, baby? Pee-wee. It's like Pee-wee's like Pee playhouse fridge. <laughs> you remember when Pee-wee opens okay. up his fridge, he's got the food in the fridge, it's made of claymation? Hell yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Okay, so this is the thing where she's dreaming, but she's awake. Yeah, so I, I if I remember right, that's how they explain it. Like, oh, the baby is uh, sleeping, and she's just, her, fucking his dreams are materialized in her real world. So, I have a question for you, Zach. This is a Serious question. So obviously, they were trying different things with each installment, and it was getting stale. Now they tried the whole dual personality uh, possession thing with part two. We got the dream warriors, the the dream master. Uh, we got the fucking dream child. You kept calling this one the dream master, I think. But the dream child. How would you have fixed the franchise? Oh yeah. <laughs> Because the fucking file I have it saved under is the Dream Master because all the Blu-rays a double disc and I for some reason I put the wrong title. I'm an idiot. So after this movie, or maybe even after Freddy's Dead, but at least after this movie, let's say their hands are in the air, like, hey, look, the fucking franchise is stagnant. The the box office returns are, are decreasing with each one. How they hand the franchise to you? What would you do differently at this point after five? Oh, uh, baby, Freddy's got to fuck somebody. He's got to fucking, he's got to fucking raw dog that shit. And uh, f fucking, you know. Uh, see, he should have fucking shot his cubbies up in somebody and fucking had a baby. That's who should have had the baby. But I'm serious. No, I'm being serious. Like, what would you have done at this point? Because they keep trying something different each one. You know, they would you have just gone back to basics? Would you have come up with an idea similar to something like they've tried and just execute it better? Yeah, I, I would fucking be like, hey, you know how you guys were trying to fucking forget that part two happened? Well, that movie's donk, and I'm going to fucking acknowledge it. So fuck you. We're going to fucking have him possess somebody again. Uh, see, he never possessed anybody again until fucking Freddy vs. Jason. They kind of, it's the only movie in the series that kind of acknowledges part two exists. And, and, and such a, like, a lightweight way, though. I, I still, I think the way, I think the way to go would have been like at this point, it was almost like a big joke. They needed to make 
a super dark sequel. Yeah. They need, they need to make a movie. I think it should have still been a sequel at this point because they were popping them out like fucking really quick, but just make it super dark. Like all of a sudden have Freddie not be funny anymore. But I, I just, I just don't think Freddie, he needed a reinvention because he just wasn't, I don't think anybody could have been scared of Freddie after this movie mm-hmm. anymore. Really? But uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was always like scared of Freddie. Like he was always the scariest one to me. Yeah, I don't know. Because the look probably. And he gets you where you're most vulnerable, man, when you're asleep. Yeah, I remember having a dream where like F- Freddie was living in uh, my old house, like our basement. And like he would come up and eat supper with us at night. And I was always afraid of him when he come up. I remember that dream for some reason. That's really weird. Was he down yeah. there? Was he down there sharpening his blades in the basement? <laughs> My parents are just like, yeah, I know he's a fucking chop lesson, but you know what? We're gonna help him out. He's, he's down on his luck. Was he? Was he licking his newspaper clippings and sticking them on the wall? <laughs> exactly. Oh, is that Ted Nugent, the Nuge? The Nuge. Yeah. I- I don't know. I still think the idea of bringing back Robert England for one last movie would be amazing and just, but be reinvent the, just reinvent it, mm. you know, have it be sort of a reboot. Like they want to do reinvent the character as an older guy. And, uh, you know, who he was originally in the original script. Yeah. Don't ignore, don't, ign- I, I'm totally in favor of not acknowledging any of these old movies, reinvent it, have him be an older guy and have him be a really dark fucking old, I don't think he'd go for the whole pedophile thing because of the interviews he's given recently. He thinks him being a baby killer is good enough, but whatever. Just, I think they could do it. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I, I don't even give a shit, man. If the if the only way they feel like they can make a dollar is to give it to somebody like James Wan or whatever, I, whatever, just do it. Blumhouse, Blumhouse. They can't do they can't do any damage at this point. If they gave it to James Wan. I would actually be like, okay, I'm fine with that. I still think he does some good stuff. Yeah, well, even like the insidious thing was almost like a dream stuff. The whole, the whole thing that the whole other world in that movie, it's almost kind of Nightmare on Elm Street. I think he could do it. Mm-hmm. He did the Fast and Furious now. Have you seen a Fast and Furious movie? Uh, I think I've seen one of them. I was at my mom's house for the holidays, and she, I think, I think Fast Five had just come out. And then my mom loved those movies, and she had it, and I fucking sat there and watched it with her. That's the only one I've ever seen. You know what's funny is I tried to get into those movies back when I was a kid. I had no desire to watch them. I had no interest in cars and shit, but it was one of those things where, like, all my normal friends liked that shit. They were like, yeah, you do, yeah, cars are cool. So I tried to like it, and I uh, like I went and saw like two in the theater, and I saw the first one, and uh, yeah, it was just like uh, it's weird when you're a kid. You're like, oh yeah, none of my friends like I, I talked to at school. They they don't watch these fucking movies with singing assholes that I watch. So I gotta fucking like this fucking shit. They like that. That looks like an asshole. Is he getting dropped into an asshole? <laughs> Hopefully, it looks like he's about to fall into a large intestine. See, maybe that this is a fucking this is New Line Cinema. Maybe it's a fucking uh, tie-in. Is Fast and Furious New Line Cinema? No, I was gonna say that's okay. that's, that's, that's the asshole from that movie. Oh, okay. We know if whenever it fucking closed, we saw like a weird fucking uh, clitoris in there. Yeah, if you look closely, it looked like the guy's asshole had a clitor. But you were fucking looking away when we did that movie. Yeah. Well, I think if James Wan did a Freddy movie, he would he would probably cast uh, Norman Bates's mom. And it's some hell yes. And he'd probably cast he pro- pff, fuck he'd cast Vin Diesel as Freddy. It'd be terrible. No. Vin Diesel. Robert Ingold or Bust. There he is. So, hey, you know what? To this little kid's credit, he's not quite as bad in this movie. He got a little worse when he got a little fatter, a little a couple years older. To his credit, he is fucking ugly, so it, it works for a horror movie too. Damn, what's the other movie he's in where he's the friend? Was he in Mikey? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, he's in Mikey. He's that neighbor kid that comes over. See, look, uh, you, you notice like the dark shit around his eyes. It's funny because like in real life, he has that now. <laughs> life imitating art. Yeah. he He's one of those kids that just had a unique look. That's why. I always thought he looked like a uh, Duckman character come to life. <laughs> in that cartoon, because he's kind of got the big forehead and the, the point. He just looks like a Duckman character. 
I don't. I actually don't think he's that ugly of a kid. I just call him ugly because everybody calls him ugly. This movie's widely known as having the, that fucking ugly kid. Uh, the dead pit guy has always mocked him for being ugly. <laughs> I always felt kind of bad. Like, oh, he's just a kid, man. Yeah, man. They don't pick on kids. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pick on kids. Fuck kids. I do, but oh, still. Oh, fuck, dude. Come on. <laughs> That's terrible. You do uh, realize. Oh, I, I, I have to speak in the past tense. You do realize that Casey Crypticon had kids. Oh yeah. That, when I mean when I when I say that I mean you know that when we go in a couple of days that there's gonna be kids like parents bring their children, they they dress up they do the whole deal. Hopefully people that listen to the show bring their kids. Well, we're gonna do. Okay, so like I said, if you guys are listening to this, we recorded a podcast, but yeah I, I, it's fine man uh, yeah. drop the fucking stick we will report uh, record a podcast we haven't done it yet babe yeah so you're making it confusing for everybody that's even in on the joke <laughs> <laughs> so but no that's gonna be a lot of fun we might bring you know what we might bring a little kid on like hey you wanna come over here and sit next to this guy Let's see, and let's see, and that'll be the ultimate test. Like, can Zach, while recording, sitting next to a little kid trying to record too? Can you can you keep your fucking behavior in check? Not make a kid joke. Yeah, that'd be. Because can you imagine if he just slipped it? Like, oh yeah, man, I'd I'd fuck a kid, and then at least look at the kid. Let's see the dad look on this kid's face. <laughs> like the kid's looking at like looking at his dad. Like, get me out of here. <laughs> see, I'd probably I'd try to make it more subtle. I'd try to make it like that seed from Airplane. Thanks a lot. Sure. You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. You ever seen a grown man naked? No, it's funny. Man, my uh, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna witness it this weekend. But have I talked about it on the the podcast that I I've got tendonitis and I've been going to physical therapy for a couple months? I thought you were saying you have ten to nine, like you you killed somebody and you were getting ten to nine, eight years in prison or something. I was like, fuck. Why would somebody get ten to nine? <laughs> That's just what popped in my head. <laughs> I'm gonna get ten to nine. They might reduce it. Like after I like after I've served ten years, they might go back and be like, you know what, you should have only served nine, so Yeah, exactly. We made we made a mistake. No, I, I ten to nine is so I've been going to physical therapy a couple of times a week and uh, most of the week I have this really cool blue tape all around my hand and my fingers and stuff, and it's in my wrist. So it's kind of a pain in the ass. So, uh, you know, I work using my wrist as far as, um, you know, with a mouse on a computer, uh, I haven't been able to do the gym in a couple of months. Have you tried jacking off? Uh, that would be a no go. That wouldn't feel too well. I tried doing, I tried doing it with my left hand. Couldn't do it. <laughs> I don't get it, dude. It's, it's, it, I, it's it's a fucking hand just like another hand but there's just something about it you can't do it maybe it's because it's your left hand it's not your dominant hand so uh you can't get a, a rhythm i don't know what it is i literally think it's a ma- a brain thing i think it's like brain waves it's it's I, 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 I literally i could be doing the same fucking thing with the rhythm and the whole thing but my brain knows it's it's the left hand and it's just not having it and yeah. i think the brain is communicating the, my left hand's communicating with my brain. My brain is communicating with my penis, and it's saying, "You know what? You're not doing anything. It's not gonna happen. Mm. It's weird. It is weird. What the fuck is happening in this part? Is this a fucking? Is this a I don't odd know. world or something? Cool world? Where that movie's called? Fucking animated all of a sudden. Yeah, it sucks, man. Have you ever done physical therapy? Never. Yeah. Well, the tendonitis sucks. It's 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 made my life. Not so fun the last few months. I think it's getting better. It's starting to get better, but like I can't. Your wrist that sucks, man. I can't. Look at that retarded fetus. He's got a big dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, they could have went full dark. They could be like, "Hey, fucking Freddy's a child molester killer. Uh, how about he just kind of flicks his dick, like just the tip of it, with his glove? We could do that. We could do that. Well, uh, that would be savage. Where's that place? Look at that. Is his face like he's just fucking like fucking inside out inside her or something? Part of her a fucking uterine wall. Yeah, I don't know. This is all weird. What's that down there? Why was it? He's giving her giving the kid his souls. Okay. Yeah. So 
So f- did Freddie legit impregnate her? Ah, uh, no, it was that her uh, boyfriend. Okay. They could have done that though. He could have like uh, they could have found out like he possessed her boyfriend. That doctor looks like James Ramar, but it's not James Ramar. Hell yeah! Who's he again? Oh, Raiden from Mortal Kombat Annihilation. He's in the Warriors. Uh, oh yeah, that guy, Dexter's dad, James Reamer. James Reamer. No, but seriously, think about it. When your right wrist, your dominant hand wrist is fucked up, like it really, it really would hurt. I can't do the things that I normally do on a day-to-day basis. I love to go to the gym. I can't lift weights. Um, I can't uh, playing guitar. Fucking no go. Hurts. Um, you already mentioned jacking off. Uh, and just so much. I, I I can't push. I can't. I couldn't uh, twist knobs. I couldn't open jars. That whole type of thing. It's getting better. Like I'm, I'm tempted to. Uh, Start going to the gym again and maybe trying to experiment with some stuff, but it's been a pain in my ass. Hardcore. Why are those pair of pants standing there on their own? Yeah, that's pretty weird. <laughs> Is that a plant coming out of them? I don't know. She's corky. She's got a pair of plants as a flower pot. Set dresser had a field day on this movie. You don't think fucking Wilcox is hot, though? I think she's not ugly, and she's not particularly my type either. She's just kind of, you know, fine. What the hell is your type? I, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying she's not. I don't have a type. I'm just, I, I call it like I see it. Fucking uh, not, fucking uh, exquisitely hot is is not your type. I, I, I take it. I think she's fine. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. No, she's fine enough. That chick, the the other chick in the movie, her walking out, uh, that's the girl that fucking uh, the the guy that played the dad from Troll Two was talking to in the documentary when he's like, well, like after he talks to her, uh, he's like, man, look at all these people that come here and they're fucking, they're they're famous for that one movie they were in. Like, I'm glad I'm not one of them. And then he realizes as he's saying it that he is like that, <laughs> and then and then he gets depressed. It's pretty donk. I still never seen that. That doc. It's good. Yeah, I'd watch it. Michael Paul Stevenson, he, he, uh, he, I would suck his dick. This dude is giving major Randall vibes. You don't see what I'm talking about? <laughs> I see it now that you bitched it. And I know you're excited for the new Jay and Silent Bob. Uh, Kevin, I, I've never been a Kevin Smith fan. I, I like him as a person, as a, as a personality. He's He seems like a really nice guy, but. I don't know what to expect from the new James Bond movie. Yeah, I haven't really liked the movie he's put out in a while since Clerks Two, probably. Yeah, hopefully Grandel's in it though. At least a cameo. That'd be dog. That's weird. That's weird how he doesn't want to come back. I mean, how big could the Clerks role be in it? Because their their role wasn't big in the first James Bond Bob like starring movie. So he really wouldn't come and just do like a day, even a day of shooting. Yeah, he didn't want to, like, apparently it was pretty hard getting him on board, too. He wanted nothing to do with acting after the first movie. I guess he hates watching the first movie. He hates seeing himself on screen and everything. But two was a much taller order. Tons yeah. of dialogue. A big, like, this is Jay and Silent Bob, like, literally. Well, he didn't want to come back because they were originally going to make Clerks 3. He wanted to come back for that. But now he might for a cameo. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, that sucks. And is that why Clerks 3 got derailed totally? Uh, that's what I'm assuming. Uh, I heard uh, rumors that somebody didn't want to come back. So I, I just assumed it was probably the guy that plays Randall because he was hard to get on board with part two. Because you could literally recast anybody else. Well, mm-hmm. we'll see. Do you ever watch any of his uh, reviews or YouTube shows? Because he's got a YouTube channel and he's got like different like video podcast type things. Uh I listen like I, I really like uh, fucking an evening with Kevin Smith, the first one. Mm. That was like I don't know, it's like four hours long, and I I, I ripped the audio and made like a CD version that I I have on my iPod. I find that funny, but yeah, like um, I don't know, I I don't find him that funny anymore. I don't know why. Yeah, like he tells some really fucking hilarious stories on that uh, evening with Kevin Smith. It's funny because you like his stuff or his older stuff, but 
as a person, he's totally different than someone like you because he's a he's exa- he's everything you're not. He's a super big comic booky nerd. Mm-hmm. And he does reviews on his YouTube channel of all the Marvel movies when they come out and he jacks them all off like they're all the great. <sighs> he does. And he's like, I, I watched one. Uh, I watched a review of him last night doing the new Spider-Man movie. And he's like, you know, and he acknowledges he's like, yeah, I know some of you guys. They, you, you wonder why I don't fucking say any bad things about these movies. Like, I don't fucking review movies I don't like. Well, that's a waste of everybody's time. Why the fuck would I do that? He's like, I'm only going to review movies I like. And I happen to really like these. Suck a dick. Um, but yeah, it's, so he's one of those guys that just kind of jerk. Every, every time you see him talking about any movie, he's going to be jerking it off. Mm-hmm. What's the deal with him and Ben Affleck? Like, what's their whole thing? Why they don't talk? I don't know now. Uh, last uh, I remember, they were friends, and then uh, yeah, I guess they're not anymore. Yeah, I don't know. He probably fucking he's pissed at Kevin Smith for uh, being the guy that got him the role in Daredevil, probably. Cause that movie was stupid. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> Hey man, he met his uh, future ex-wife doing that. So, and he had his kids. It's not all bad. Oh yeah. How come nobody made a big deal about the uh, race change in that movie? Like now, it's like a big thing. You know, they got uh, what's it called, Ariel, Little Mermaid. It's like a black girl, and everybody's fucking losing their shit. But they did that in Daredevil. They recast. They they cast the Kingpin for the first time ever. The Kingpin on a big screen as Michael Clark Duncan, a black guy, when he was always a white guy, right? But nobody he, is he supposed to be the same Kingpin from like fucking Spider Man same Spider-Man same universe okay. same universe yeah uh, Kingpin is uh, the main villain in Daredevil but one of the in one of the so they probably didn't fucking notice because they probably didn't watch it <laughs> like big black big bald guy it's fun it works dude I remember they Colin Farrell in that movie and it was pretty cringy was he in that. Yeah, he played the character Bullseye, and the character Bullseye is really stupid because he's got a bullseye on his forehead, and that works in a comic book, but in the movie, he's literally got just like a bullseye, like a perfect bullseye on his forehead, and he walks around calling himself Bullseye, and he can take himself seriously. Like, my family, uh, we we vacationed somewhere, and in the... uh the hotel they were they you know how sometimes they have movies that were in the theaters but aren't out yet yeah it, it was like pay-per-view uh, on demand f- for the day yeah they had they had that movie the daredevil and i was like oh uh yeah they uh fucking kevin smith he was talking about that in the dvd with kevin smith and uh, he tells a funny story about how uh he got fucking ben affleck the role of that um i'm gonna watch it because i heard he's in it and i'm just sitting there watched it trying to like it and like this isn't good is kevin smith in it yeah he's got a cameo I've never watched it. I've never even seen it. I liked the Daredevil show. I thought it was good. Never watched that one. The Netflix Marvel shows were grittier and violent and uh different division, I guess, but Vincent D'Onofrio played the kingpin in that and he's really good. Yeah, the the guy with the fucking uh the the cockroach guy. Sugar in water. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever see that movie? <laughs> he directed a movie. Well, at one point called like within the woods or something it was like a freaking uh an indie band indie rock band in the woods and it was like a pseudo musical mm-hmm. or the the indie band wrote all the music it was it was it was cringy it was bad it's pretty cringy vincent d'onofrio yeah <laughs> i don't remember and I, I like I remember hearing a story that, like everybody in the band hated him by the end of the movie and were t- they were talking shit about him at the premiere or something. So you never said uh, I know we could talk more about it when we do our cinema anima for for Wicker Man, but you never really kind of gave at least an overview of was it worth a theater watch or is it something I really fucking liked it. Uh, I walked out like, OK, that was either seven or eight. But then uh, I quickly said, oh, yeah, it's totally an eight. But now it's like, uh, you know what? It might go up. I might. Uh, what? It's the first movie I fucking immediately went online and saw. Can I fucking pre-order this already? Did uh, Did you see Hereditary? Because this is the same dude, right? I did. I got that, too. I, I think this is better. OK. And I I've been hesitant about watching Hereditary. It's been streaming, I think, on like Prime or something. And is it the same? St- I actually want to go back and watch Hereditary because I missed a, quite a bit of it. Is it the same sort of vibe? Like you could tell it's the same filmmaker and the whole deal has got a similar type of vein to it. Um, not really, because this movie has like no nighttime scenes. 
Like it's all during broad daylight. Okay. Um, they're they're visiting a part of the of the world where like it's only dark for a really short amount of time, and so even when it's dark, it's like still pretty daylight. Yeah. And there's one scene that uh, I'm remembering it, I remember it being really fucking creepy. The you know, like an image that happens in it, and I'm like, that would have been nighttime, right? I'm I'm thinking about it. And it's like that was nighttime, right? And I don't think it was. I I want to go back and watch it again. So I'll go. Uh... I'll probably go see that. Obviously not this weekend because that's when we're in KC, but the next weekend. See that that's probably gonna fuck you up though, because if you watch that before Wicker Man. Or or have you already watched Wicker Man? I've only ever seen the remake of Wicker Man. <laughs> so so why so so you're saying seeing the Wicker Man remake first didn't already fuck up the original for me? No. Okay. Because it it seems like this movie it seems like the director saw the remake of Wicker Band and said, That was fucking retarded. I could do that better and decided he was going to someday. And Is it this this seems like uh, basically uh a modern retelling of a Wicker Man. Like uh like how fucking, you know, Last House on the Left was a modern retelling of whatever happened to Solange or whatever that movie was called. Okay. Solange, isn't that how the name's pronounced? Solange, okay. Look at this. Oh. Or no, it was The Virgin Spring was the name of the movie. That yeah. I don't think that it was a remake. I kind of keep forgetting, but uh, I think it comes out here in like a week or two, but the Tarantino flick. Looking forward to that too, baby. I think it's two weeks from today. I think it's like in the third week of the month or something, July. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, those are always good times. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is I, it's like I know I already know it's going to be better than Hateful Eight. Oh, yeah. You know, and did you watch the extended cut of that? It's on Netflix now. Hateful Eight. It's like uh, seven hours long or something. They put the lo- that long a version on there. Yeah, they made it into a mini series, So it's split up into four parts. It's the it's the original version that they showed in uh, fucking 40, 35, whatever millimeter it was. OK, like the, the ultra wide screen. Does it make it better as a series? I don't know. I didn't watch it. I've only ever watched it in theaters. So maybe if I revisit it, I'll, I'll watch that version. Yeah. I remember, I, I remember enjoying it, but I remember like it ended in a way that was like that makes it so that I can't watch it again. Because it, 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 so, uh, something about like the way the the like they revealed something that was like that kind of fucking messes up what happened earlier in the movie. I, I don't Tell really about, remember what it was. The Channing Tatum shit being in the under the floor and him. Oh yeah, the, like it's like oh he had plenty of time to fucking kill them. Yeah, I don't know what the hell they were. It's like why. Yeah, like like there was part, there was even parts where like the 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 sister was like sitting down playing guitar and they were like off huddled around a table not even paying attention. Didn't even have to kill him, just fucking sneak her out and leave. Isn't it weird how he's as, at least this is what he says. I mean, I'll you know I'll see it when it happens. Adamant that he wants to retire after ten films. This is his ninth film, which would imply that his final movie would be the Star Trek movie he's attached to. Yeah, I think he's just one of those guys. It's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna retire. Like uh, Kevin Smith was doing that for a while too, for some reason. Yeah, this is gonna be my sauce. Like, I'm gonna retire after they. I, I remember whenever they revealed, like, oh yeah, Clark Street is happening. And it's gonna be my swan song. And like three months later, he's like, well, after that, I'm gonna do Mallrats two. That's gonna be the last one. What happened to Mallrats two? What happened to Mallrats two? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like he was doing like a campaign where he was on like Instagram, uh, basically unveiling like, oh yeah, he said yes. Fucking uh, Brandon Lee said yes. Of course he did. What else is he fucking uh, doing? She said yes. Well, Shannon Elizabeth, and then I stopped hearing about it. You talking about Shannon Doherty? Shannon Doherty, yeah. Yeah. I of course they're gonna say yes. What are all these people doing? I I remember hearing a rumor that it was changed to a fucking TV series at one point. So I don't know. But it's weird, though. At first, it was all about, okay, Clerks 3. Okay, fuck that. Mallrats 2. Ah, scrap that. Jane and Silent Bob 3. Or 2. Yeah, see there? She resembles the doll. And then she broke. But regardless, though, does that not say something about uh, Kevin Smith's uh, career at the moment? Is the three projects he was kicking around the last it was, were all sequels to Former Glories? 
Yeah, he definitely knew he wanted to bring back JSO Bob at least. Because it's like, yeah, man, no one's liking my Tusks or my Red St- all these weird movies he's doing. Fucking Tusk, like, Tusk is passable to me. It's like a six. But there's one fucking scene that is just so fucking terrible. Yeah. It's like a 15 minute stretch of the movie where fucking. Uh, is it a transformation scene? No, it's like fucking all of a sudden. Uh, what's his name? J- fucking Justin uh, Long. Edward Scissor. Edward Scissor hands. What's his name? Johnny Depp. He shows up and he's telling a story about when he met the guy who's the the Tusk character. And it's, I've watched the movie twice and both times I lose fucking interest in the movie at that point. And then I realize like, holy shit, I grabbed my phone and I haven't been paying attention to this movie. Does, does Johnny Depp also show up in ho- Yoga Hosers? I think so, maybe. As the same character, I think. Yeah, because it's like, uh, I think, yeah, that's... Those movies are kind of connected because his daughter's in it, and her daughter's friend is played by John. That's the reason why he's in those damn movies is because he gave his daughter a fucking working role. Yeah, apparently those are those movies are both movies he just came up with on the spot while doing a podcast. I'm not surprised. And then he's like, "Oh yeah, you want me to make that movie? Uh, tweet hashtag Tusk Yes or something like that." And uh, the fucking uh, on the end credits, it actually has an excerpt from the fucking podcast where they were talking about it. And at the end of fucking yoga housers or hosers, whatever, it has uh, the, their fucking whatever conversation that was born out of. Mm. Which is weird, watching a fucking movie where there's credits going and you're hearing talking like a radio. Yeah, that's odd. Show or something. Yeah. What's, uh, fuck, what's the movie I was about to say? Uh, they released a teaser of Three from Hell. I don't give a fuck about that. The Rob Zombie flick, man. I think uh, I still watched it. I, I, I will check it out because you know what? What? Lords of Salem is a good movie. Oh. I like it. So I, I'll watch. I'll watch Three from Hell as well. I mean, his best movie was the uh, fucking Devil's Rejects, and and even that gets a little over praised. You know? Yeah, I, thought I would give the Devil's Rejects like a six. I don't think it reaches like. Oh yeah, that's a, I like that movie. It's it's decent. Yeah, it's decent. Exactly. And I think I don't know why it gets elevated the way it does because because it was for a long time his best movie. Yeah, that's what I was calling it. But I feel like the movies, the kind of movies it's paying homage to, I get it. It's supposed to be like this gritty exploitation, but it doesn't go very hard. Yeah. Dude. It's 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 it, aesthetically it looks like one of those movies, but it, it it's a movie that like the beginning of it and like the music, like that music choice and the the, the opening scene. It's like I am ready for this. This is gonna be fucking great, and it, it's it doesn't live up to what I want from it. But you know all the you know all the scenes in the movie that you you realize that oh Rob Zombie clearly thinks this is the edgy part of the movie. They're not that fucking edgy. Like the scene where. The the fucking the gun, the throat fucking the gun and the hotel room and all that stuff. Yeah. It's not that envelope pushing. It is one of the scenes I remember from it, though. Yeah. And then it, none of it's like. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember that scene because it's got the chick from uh, Three's Company naked in it. Oh, the, the brunette. <laughs> the nurse. The third roommate. Yeah. It's just none of it's too per. It, none of it's uh, living up to what it's trying to emulate is what I'm saying. But it's all right. It's fine. She's also the chick from Mallrats, uh, bringing it full circle with the third nipple. Mm. But yeah, anyway, I'll see it. And uh, I, I just think he's one of those guys. I think he could probably make a decent, comparable movie if he's using those characters. The guy just has no ideas in him. So he's got to go back to an old idea that kind of worked. At some point, I'm going to fucking do uh, Lord of Salem on a cinema and I'm going to make you watch that again. Fuck, dude. I, I if you If you picked it, I would do it. You pick it, I stick it. I would. It's just, it's just not good. I think if you go to that movie in the right mood, you, you'll you'll come out liking it better than you did. Dude, I gave that movie a week's worth to, to, to for me to land in the right mood to watch it. Yeah, but sometimes that's the fucking worst way to watch a movie is whenever you're fucking watching it in parts over a long period of time. No, I kept starting it over. Uh, well, no, I, eventually I gave up on that starting it over because it wasn't happening. But Riverman was preaching it, and now he's he's finally drinking my Kool Aid. He's like, yeah, what was I thinking? Yeah, what the fuck? Why hasn't he died yet drinking your Kool-Aid? I don't know. Isn't that supposed to kick in pretty quick? That fucking... It wasn't even fucking uh, Kool-Aid that they Dude, were drinking. It was like a... <laughs> I would kill. I would kill to be able to do an interview with Rob Zombie. And I... And, and it, I, thought, I thought you were going to say, if like, fuck it. I was, I was making a Jonestown joke and you're fucking... No. I, I thought you were going to be... I would kill to get, get a, a fucking interview with George Jones. 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, he's dead, man. Yeah. George, yeah, George, they, they wait, wait. Even, uh, George Jones, the country singer? I'm just kidding. Oh, fuck. I forget his real name. Yeah. John? John? Yeah, something like that. But yeah, it's funny. They didn't even, they weren't even drinking real Kool Aid. They had like a generic brand of Kool Aid. It's like uh, Heat Aid or something like that. What was it? Uh, fuck, I don't remember what the store brand used to be called. Yeah, those are those are funny. Uh, Jonestown Massacre. Why oh, can't I think of his name? Was it John? It was something with a J. I think Jim Jones. Fuck, Jim. Jim. Jim Jones. George Jones is dead too. To your credit, I don't think I don't think I'd have luck at either one of those interviews. But uh, see, I, I I got into cults and learning about them when uh, one day when I was ten and I found out like I was the news was on and it said today is the tenth anniversary of the jo- Jonestown uh, massacre. I was like, what the fuck is that? And uh, then I learned about it. I was like, this is dog. <laughs> I think uh, shit happened on my birthday, though. Yeah. I was going to say something. And I totally fucking lost it. No, I think Rob Zombie, I've, I've said this before. I think he made the wrong calls in his career. And if he's lucky, clearly going back to the well of the Firefly family is his trump card. It's his ace in the hole. It's going to save him. And I think. I think to a degree it will. I think it'll get some buzz and I think it'll get all right reviews. It'll kind of bring him above water again, but he cannot fuck up again if he gets a second chance here. Because what I think he should have done after he did Devil's Rejects, no, not Devil's Rejects, after he he did the right thing, after he did Halloween, he did Halloween. Remember before he did Halloween, there was a a small point in time where he was going to remake fucking uh, The Blob. The Blob, The Blob. No, that was after... (laughs) That was after. Oh, was it? Yeah. So that was such a fucking bad idea. <laughs> he was like, "I'll never do remakes." Then he did Halloween. He's like, "Okay, well, they they convinced me because they, they were gonna. They said I could, I could be my own imagination and reimagining of the series, so I did it." They gave me a big fucking check, and I still get to make my own movie, really. But he's like, "I'll never do this. I'll never do a sequel. I won't do any more." And then he was talking about the Blob remake. I was like, "Well," I'm like, "Okay." He's like, "But I'll never do Halloween sequel." Whatever. But he did fucking Halloween too. He actually scrapped the Blob to do to fast track Halloween too because they wanted one out fast, right? That's probably what killed fucking the Blob. Then how bad that movie did or something. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it did. But what he should have done after he got to ride on the success of an established franchise like Halloween and he he got sort of a grandfathered hit, right? It wasn't because it was Rob Zombie. It was because it was a Halloween remake and that's why it did 25 million or whatever the first weekend and it was a a hit. He should have rode that wave and then he should have made, instead of of pleasing his own ego by making a bunch of shitty fucking Rob Zombie movies, he should have put that in the backseat and used his hit to get another project that necessarily wasn't his, mm-hmm. you know, like gain some credibility, gain some, gain some ground here. He, cause he had, I bet you a million dollars after he did Halloween, he had some weight. Mm-hmm. He had a little weight. He should have taken another project written by somebody else and did it. But no, he had the ego about him. It's like, I'm going to make all these fucking shitty, uh, bull house 31 movies and, and make a string of fucking flops. And uh, now no one, he lost his chance. I just don't think. It's the same thing with like the Soska sisters. I think they're hacks. Mm. I think they're absolutely hacks. Uh, I think uh, they maybe made the wrong decision. They did this thing where they kind of had a minor hit with uh, American Mary as far as like a, a buzz hit or whatever. And they just fucking take in every job that gets thrown at them. It's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? You guys are hacks. I don't know. Yeah, some people they seem to think like, yeah, I'll I'll do a couple fucking uh, studio movies and then uh, I'll save up money to make the one I want to make, and then they always fall into like this shit. They 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 end up now they're doing that fucking uh, the movie they wanted to make apparently now is a fucking remake of uh, Rabbit. R- Rabbit, yeah. What the fuck? No, I'm so, dude. They made Dead Hooker in a Trunk. Not a good movie. Fight me, anybody. It's not good. But it got never seen that one. It's not good. It's one of those movies that fucking Lush loved back in the day. Oh, so great. I'm like, this is fucking shitty. But anyway, then they did American Mary, which American Mary, to its credit, is not a bad movie. Catherine, yeah. is, Catherine Isabel carries it. It's, mm-hmm. you know, she makes it watchable. Um, but it's not amazing or anything, but it is what it is. It's definitely a step up from their first one. And then after that movie, they're like, yeah, we'll make this shitty See No Evil 2. I watched that. <laughs> oh. We'll 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 jump into bed 
with not even our own WWE produced movie. We're going to do the sequel to a WWE movie. How weird is that? And then, yeah, we're going to take the sci-fi channel, Elevator. We'll do a sci-fi channel. We'll host a sci-fi channel, like, game show, Elevator. Like, what the fuck? They were going everywhere. And then, yeah, now they're doing Rabid. Like, wow. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird how fucking Hollywood works, too, because I remember, uh, oh, they're making a rabid uh, remake, like, uh, fucking 2008 or something, and then it just gets kicked around, and they uh, end up giving it to, like, the Salska sisters. Weird. Yeah. I'm surprised they made a movie like Black Christmas. They remade that as early in the fad as they did. Mm-hmm. You know, that always blew my mind, because it's like, you think they're going to go for the, the, the most marketable first. I think that was, like, a pre, like, fad too like that was kind of one that happened before the fucking remakes were just hitting so often but you, you think they would go for the nightmare on elm streets first and the <laughs> all these money makers and then they would mm-hmm. eventually when the well's drying up okay let's go for black christmas and you know well, eventually they'll that, that that's later whenever they decided like yeah we need to make remakes as just a money machine like before they really were like hey let's take these movies that we consider not that good and try to make them better but it was like people that suck at making movies thinking they weren't good and they were going to make it better. I, I think it was the start. I think it was the start of, uh, of it being a trend. And now I, I, I thought it was just going to be a fad and fucking what? 15 years later, it's still going strong. It's just a thing they do. <laughs> it's a never fucking dying fad, man. But it's uh, it was black Christmas. Cause I remember around black Christmas was around the same time that house of wax also came out. And that was kind of also around the time when uh, Hills Have Eyes, the first re- the remake, those those movies mm-hmm. kind of they were kind of like the first line of, uh, you know, remake. Maybe that was into the fad then. It was. They were all around the same time. I remember this because I was shocked that they I, w- I remember being shocked that they did Black Christmas. Oh, did you see that? Did you see what she just did? She walked up, and put her hand on her shoulder. That's all she had to do. She just freed her soul. It's all good now. Yeah stupid go ahead no i had a buddy around that time one of my good buddies we kind of made like a a a pact where okay we're gonna go see every horror movie even if they're shit and we don't want to see them because uh, it was just something we did and we eventually stopped a few years later because we real we literally pulled out the calculators and looked up how much money we wasted because we would go to these movies and be like dude we don't i don't want to fucking see this like me neither man we gotta do it We, we dreaded everything we went and saw and uh yeah i remember that was one of them and it just, uh, I wanted a refund. The fuck? Mm-hmm. This is weird. <laughs> this whole scene. Teach me! <laughs> yeah. This Not is, good. Yeah. So. Is, That's kind of funny the way he threw her down there. Yeah. He kind of looks like Evil Ash, but like mini ugly kid version of Evil Ash. <laughs> Yeah, we were going to, well, I threw out the idea uh, because Aaron at first was like, let's do something quick. And I was like, hey, you want to do an episode of uh, Ash vs. Ale Dad? No, I I still really want to do the Universal Horror movies, man. And those Draculas and all those old movies, they're only like an hour, ten minutes, man. They're they're short. Features were were much, you know, shorter back then. Well, I I need to watch them first. I will. So I know what I'm talking about. The hell, man. Yeah, so uh, she let fucking uh, Miss Kruger, uh, she she put her hand on her shoulder, and then she, like, for some reason scared her. We got a jump scare, even though she technically helped her. And now uh, she's just going to say something to Freddy, and then uh, some fucking giant sperm come out of his back, and uh, it kills him. Uh, there, on the VHS version of this, there's a scene, I think this is the one, where, like, he's being stretched out. Okay, no, this isn't the one. Yeah, I think that's part four. Like, uh, if you watch on the VHS, there's a part where you can see a hand controlling the puppet head of, uh, Freddy. Mm-hmm. Trying to pull up some comments here. Got a few I want to read, if that's okay with you. Let's see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kind of want to. I, I, I kind of want to read. Well, this is a Mac and Zach one, but it's the one featuring me. It's the Munchie. Nice. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and read it. You could always read it. Uh, 
You could always read on mm. Mac is too. Mendoza, he says, I'm listening to this while watching Munchie and I cannot stop laughing. You guys are fucking crazy. I love how you guys go into Rocco's modern life and Doug. And I, he's referring to when fucking Mac was doing his, hey, Doug, funny. His fucking, he does it so good. I, I was dying laughing at that, man. I can't do it very well. Uh, Rocco's Bar Life, uh, they're, they're doing a TV movie. Uh, although it's actually, it was going to be a TV movie. Now it's going to Netflix, baby. It's going to be like, a, it's going to be like basically the same people playing it, the same animation style. And it's just made like, oh, as if a new episode came out. And all of a sudden they're in, you know, the recent times. It looks pretty donk. Dude, did I, did I read? I'm having deja vu because I can never tell if I, I read something on a podcast or if I just showed it to you. Did I already read the, uh, the praise you got on the Turtles 3 thumbnail? On the last one? Oh, no. You, you, you posted that picture in the group chat, though. Really? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Somebody, uh, Adrian Mamadovsky, says, Dat thumbnail, though. Oh, yeah. You did say that here. I just wanted to hear you praise me again. I oh. love it. <laughs> well, yeah. You need, you need more praise than you get on those thumbnails, man. They're great. Uh, no, but where we should really be talking about is all the lovely Cowboy Way comments we got. Because uh, Cowboy Way, we oh. did that a couple of weeks back. So we're going to start off with Mendoza. He says, I've seen Drake Bell's dick pics. It's nice. Because oh. <laughs> Zach was all about that. Uh, I just fucking snorted. What the fuck was that? Yeah, it was fucking weird, man. <laughs> he also leaves another comment on Cowboy Way. He says, I do love when seminal bands take chances, good or bad. I do like the team up of Metallica and Lou Reed. I love when you guys talk music. Have you guys thought about doing a music episode? I know little of metal music. What is a list of metal albums you guys would recommend for a novice like myself? Uh, we've thought about having a music podcast in general. Yeah, I was thinking the other day, like, that'd be funny if, like, we were the first fucking people to ever do, like, a, a, a concert DVD of a band. Like, I have, a, like, that Iron Maiden live. Dude, I... A classic concert. Yeah, I don't know. Because they made an album out of it and everything. Yeah, I know. The Life on the... life, uh, li Death on the Road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if that would go over so well because you'd you'd legit probably have to watch it. Yeah, we we'd have to like completely muted on uh, YouTube at least. Yeah, yeah. So I, we've we've tried. I, I've tried. We've we've been so close to getting a music podcast off the ground. Uh, Pat was showing interest in it. Pat from the Walking Dead podcast we did back in the day. He's sort of the music aficionado, and especially with underground music. And I think he'd be amazing at it. It's just all about you know pushing him over that ledge and getting him to commit a little bit. Speaking of music, this is the first Freddy movie to, to have a, a, a dank hip hop track at the end track, at the end series. What about Fat Boys? Yeah, it was in the movie though. Oh, Freddy's dead. Okay. Um, no, and you know what, Pat, it's one of those things where he would do great. I think he would need, he would need someone like Zach to kind of at least We'd have to start him off. Yeah, I'd have to be the autistic shield that bounces, like, you know, autism off of, you know, I collect it. I'm the glue that collects all the autism, and then that way the good shit bounces back. I just think we'd have to, like, do it with him for a little bit till he kind of gets comfortable with it again, mm -hmm. you know, and he would, I, 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 I'm, go maybe I'll see him this week when I... When I go to Riverman's house, when, you know, we're, I'm just going to be there a day before we drive up to Kansas City. Maybe I'll see Pat. Maybe I won't. But it's something I kind of want to put a jingle in his ear about again because he would be amazing at it. I got a perfect fucking title for it. It's Pat Podcast. We could just fucking steal the movie, the whole fucking gimmick from the, the character. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you have any recommend? I have some recommendations for Mendoza, and I, I put them in there in the comments. But um, metal obviously has a lot of different subgenres. I'd say if you're totally just totally ignorant to all metal, like you don't even know the basics, you should start with the basics, the basic gateway drugs of, of heavy music. And, uh, you know, even if you're say, like I said, I don't know how unfamiliar you are, but because if anybody that's even the least bit familiar with metal, these are going to sound generic. But like I said, if you're, if you've never listened to it, you can't go wrong with like, fucking i'd say even metallica's black album that's like the ultimate gateway drug because if you're not used to heavy music that's kind of radio friendly but it kind of has enough hooks in it to to kind of get you started but then you go into the master puppets and then you it, it, pull in some priest in there defenders of the faith 90s you know cliche as it is pantera vulgar display of power far beyond driven are great uh if you want to go 70s something like master reality or sabbath bloody sabbath 
Uh, I, so even even as blueprint as something like Slayer Raining Blood is, and how that's sort of like a staple, I wouldn't even start there. That's not where people start. People usually start with Metallica, and then they go into like Raining Blood and stuff. And then from Slayer, people usually get into like death metal and gore grind and shit like that. But there's obviously different types of metal. Zach, you, you probably got different recommendations. Now, keep in mind, he doesn't know any, so you don't want to start him off with like. Sir, you know what I mean? Like as much as I want to talk about entombed and all this cool shit, I would never give something too extreme to somebody that wasn't that wasn't privy to it. What would you say? Well, you want to start out with the fucking Norwegian, uh, you know, church burning shit. Is what I'm saying. The cult. I, actually, I, I really don't know where to start. Like I would say, like yeah, check out like uh, documentaries about like fucking influential, uh, you know, like Black Sabbath and stuff. And then maybe ch- if you hear something you like, check it out. I I legit think the Black album is the ultimate gateway album. Mm-hmm. Like if you're just listening, if you listen to popular music, classic rock, Black album because it's kind of a little bit of everything. It's got a little bit of a rock classic element. It's got Sabbath True is a heavy metal song, but it's still hooky. It's on the radio. I'd say that's where you should start. War Pigs is like the donkest political metal song ever written. It's donk. Yeah. He he rhymes uh, uh, masses with masses in that song. Good for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? And plus now, like with Spotify, you have no, like, yeah, back when I was, when I was a little kitty, uh, you know, you had to fucking save up your buddies and fucking, you go to the fucking store and you shoot your cubbies on one fucking thing to listen to. And now it's just like... Yeah, yeah, you just it could be overwhelming. I grew, yeah, I know. I used to have to. It was a gamble. It was a gamble, man. Mm-hmm. You'd buy something based on a cover because you because you legit just heard the name in a magazine. You read it and mm-hmm. and, and it was kind of affiliated with other bands. You're like, oh, so maybe I'll like this. Yeah, like Power Slave comes to mind. Yeah, it's a great one. I Iron Maiden. I was raised on Metallica and Black Sabbath and all that stuff, and then I gravitated from bands like Metallica. I went and discovered bands like Sepultura. I remember going to the record store and I bought a rise just based off the album cover. Cause it was fucking awesome. Now, Arise, Are you familiar with Sepultura? Old Sepultura? Say no. Okay. So Arise is kind of a, it's some people consider it a thrash record, but to me it's, it's a thrash record, but it's, it's just as much a death metal album as well. But death metal, people say death metal, but death metal has got different sub genres that people don't realize. Cannibal Corpse is death metal, but this is more like the death metal that's like obituary and death, you know, Chuck Schuldner and stuff like that. They, they sound totally different because there's that death metal that sounds like uh, the, the pig, the pig snorts and the fucking cookie monster, the burps. That's, that's mm-hmm. like Cannibal Corpse. But then bands like Death or Obituary and uh, fucking Cynic or whatever, those bands had more of a, a high pitch, almost kind of like black metal. Like, yeah. like the, the like I, I started out listening to like the weirder <laughs> like I started out I think Screamo was like something I started out with like early Screamo like uh like the original like uh Jerome's Dream you ever hear of like no. Orchid like uh, back then Screamo was more like oh it, it more resembled like oh black metal but like chaotic like punk with black metal vocal or something it, yeah it's hard to describe but now like all the genres change and become like a caricature of themselves too it's weird yeah. uh Mutineer he says uh Bone Machine is a masterpiece because we were dropping album titles and talking about fucking uh, donk. yeah um he also says stones for the win because we were talking about uh, the stones versus the beatles yeah it's, it's the stones it's the only correct answer yeah i'm a beatles guy i like the stones fine too but i think the beatles you know get my rocks off baby that's a great song i can only get my rocks off when i'm sleeping too uh currently so david capper the musician magician himself he says, currently listening to this episode while typing this comment, but had to leave this idea. Bioexploitation. Start with La Bamba, start with La Bamba, then Ray, then The Doors, Walk the Line, The Buddy Holly Story, The Runaways. Does this in a does this is Spinal Tap count? He says, or is that a spoof exploitation? Exploitation. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That could also fall under documentary exploitation because it's a fake documentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says Eight Mile, straight out of Compton. Uh, what about the what about that Oscar winning Queen biopic directed by that child molester from last year? Sarcasm. 
Mm-hmm. I, I've heard Rocket Man's really good. Yeah, good it didn't things. make quite the splash that uh, the Queen movie did. But, uh, yeah. well, the guy who directed Rocket Man was the guy that took over for the child molester directing Queen. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because uh, apparently there's already a fucking HD version that's leaked of Rocket Man, too. Probably. So, Brian Singer still got the credit uh, for directing the movie because he directed most of it. I think it was a contract thing. Yeah, they probably should have waited a little longer before releasing Rocket Man. Like, at least a year. It was a con. Yeah, I know, but they want to cash in on the the hype of uh, the Queen and how that well that did. So uh, Brian Singer's still the only person credited for directing the Queen movie, but uh, he did do most of it. But they hired the guy, this one guy, to finish the movie, and that's who ultimately also did Rocket Man. And uh, mm-hmm. they actually there was talks about it being like a shared universe, and there being like a little scene where uh, Freddie Mercury, Robbie Malik, or what, Robbie Malik. That's just a weird idea. <laughs> Shared universe for these movies. Well, well, I mean, there's enough connections for it, and uh, they really were close. Like, you no, know, uh, Freddie Mercury and Elton John were really close. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's like, yeah, the idea was pitched to just have like a scene. Like, uh, there's a scene in a restaurant, just to have like uh, a pass by scene, or maybe Freddie Mercury's at the same event, and they just kind of give a nod to each other, just something. But ultimately, he uh, said they didn't do it just because he didn't want to do the whole shared universe thing. You know, kind of uh. weird. Uh, which I don't know if that's ever been done before with bio shit, you mm-hmm. know, but you know, be interesting. Yeah. It would have been interesting. Uh, nod. Uh, lastly, I think we're going to end with, uh, oh, I guess we really didn't actually comment on Capper. Do we think that's a good idea? Yeah. There's tons of good movies to do. Hell yeah. We're at some point we're going to fucking run out. We're going to go through every exploitation we possibly can. I personally like La Bamba. I actually never saw Ray. The Doors is a good talking piece. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's terrible. Uh, Walk the Line. I'm not sure I ever sat through the whole thing. Uh, Buddy Holly story with fucking Gary Busey playing Buddy Holly. The most le- the least convincing Gary Busey I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I've seen that. Uh, the Runaways. Never saw The Runaways. I've seen Spinal Tap. I saw that one. I've, so yeah. I've seen the ones you haven't fucking seen. I saw Walk the Line and The Runaways. I've seen 8 Mile. I've seen Straight Outta. I really like Straight Outta Compton. Uh, even though it's Kind of like the Queen movie, it's they they omit a lot of shit, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's pretty self serving to the producers putting the movie, you know, to Dre. They leave out all the bad shit, right? Mm-hmm. They basically make uh, fucking uh, the the death of the band all on uh, Easy shoulders when it wasn't. Yeah, and uh, they'll 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 definitely cast the big light on his AIDS drama and all that stuff, but they don't talk about Dr. Dre raping chicks beating bitches right and all the stuff they did yeah, beating up the girl uh, you, you remember i uh, forgot about dre or uh no uh fucking uh guilty conscience yeah, yeah. what fucking eminem says something like uh you want to take advice from somebody that slapped d bar <laughs> that was like uh i remember when that that came out that was like the funniest fucking shit that was the first time people had ever heard him called out for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was hilarious it's it's pretty funny i'm surprised he let it fly <laughs> yeah yeah the movie's a fluff piece it's a great movie but it is a fluff and they wrote out arabian prince all together right mm-hmm. it's just you got to take those movies for what they are they're uh, i i don't know if there's ever going to be like a biopic that's just true man and real and the thing is is people do that when they write books the autobiography it's like the only reason i'm going to write it, the only way i could do an autobiography is if i fucking just pull no punches i put it all out there they never do that for fucking movies Right. You read a book like Scar Tissue, you know, that's uh, what's his face? Red Hot Chili Peppers book. Mm. Uh, why can't I think? Why can't I fucking throw his name out there? Anthony Kiedis. And that guy says some shit like he talks about losing his virginity when he was 13 year old to like a, an older woman. His dad, fuck his dad's girlfriend. He lost his virginity to his dad's girlfriend. His dad gave him his son, his girlfriend for the night to lose his virginity. Isn't that fucked up? And it's, fucked up. it's weird. And he talks openly about how he was. Uh, I might get my facts a little bit loose here because he might, I think he was one of those cases where he paid like an Elvis thing paid to have custody of some underage girl. And he's fucking her hey. like at the, something like that. Like he like he's open up in the I don't think that book would have came out today, but I think it was OK when it came out in like 2006 or whatever, whenever it came out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's fucking some like 14 year old. Yeah, you know it's just weird those are not flying in the movies man mm-hmm. 
You know that you think if they ever made like an Eagles biopic, you think that you think they would brush over the fact that Don Henley got arrested in a fucking no, he didn't get he the cops came to a hotel room in the 80s uh, because he was with a 14 year old girl and she overdosed on fucking drugs. Yeah, you know, I mean, Don Henley was giving drugs to a 14 year old and fucking her and, and caused her to OD. But we all love Don Henley because he's got the golden voice. You know, he's America's singer. Dude, you go to the heartland, people like my grandfather and the grandparents, dude, they all love Don Henley. They love the Eagles, you know, because America. But like, dude, fucking Don Henley was in all kinds of drugs. And like I said, he's fucking OD'd a 14 year old girl that he stuck his dick in in the 80s when he was a grown ass man, fucking like 40 years old, 40s. What the fuck, man? I, I tried telling my grandpa that one time. Like, I know you love the Eagles and all, but like, I don't think his his values align to your Christian values, grandpa. Not in the back in the day, though, but drugs, it's its a terrible, 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 terrible thing. Uh, but anyway, I like the idea. Um, I think it'd be cool. There's plenty of good biopics I'd love to do. I think the best uh, the comment to leave off on is yet another comment on our increasingly popular in the uh, India region, The Mask. We got a, we got a comment by, by somebody named Deep Anchor Gupta. <laughs> which is his first name is deep anchor. Hell yeah. Deep anchor. He says, fuck you, bastard ellipsis. <laughs> fuck you, bastard. Now, Zach and I, we, we talk about this all the time. When we get a, a, an insult like that without context, we, we can only assume we can only assume it's because he's an incel. You don't read. This says the mass commentary clear, clear as day. And, uh, but there's something about it, man. Clearly, in countries like India or fucking Malaysia, you guys are like flies to shit when it comes to this movie, The Mask. Seriously, it's insane. And I don't get it. And uh, but whatever. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, hopefully you like the commentary, but you, you speak good enough English to say, fuck you, bastard. So you could probably listen to it. We're mm-hmm. just talking about a movie that you appreciate, too. You should appreciate that. See, I choose to think that he wasn't insulting us. He was just repeating something he heard on the commentary. Okay. He thinks we're funny. Okay. So we'll just go along with that. Well, thank you, Deep Anchor. I'm going to I'm gonna fucking lower my Deep Anchor into your mom's vagina. I'm not going to do that at all. Yeah, that, my, my dick's got like prickly things around the head. So like once I go in, I can't come out. Like it's uh, fucking, uh, I, I'll fucking rip your mom apart trying to pull my dick out of her. It's fucking it's You're, crazy. You, you, not, you not like a dog? Yeah. The best thing to do is just let you finish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just let it happen. Okay. No, anyway, I, I kid a little bit. I, I don't care. Uh, I'm glad you clicked on the video. I'm glad you didn't like it. It's fine. Anybody uh, that stops by our channel, I'm appreciative. Even if it's when you think you're going to watch a full-blown movie free of charge, you know, but I still say just 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 go to your local bazaar and pick up a fucking pirated copy because I'm sure it's what you have to do over there anyway, mm-hmm. right? But uh, anybody, uh, sorry, anyway, everybody who left messages and comments and, and continues to do so, we appreciate it. You're amazing. You're the reason why we keep doing this. Um, thanks for the support. And as usual. Same old spiel. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing all the stuff, sharing us around, uh, getting the word out there and uh, following us on podcast uh, services as well and leaving us feedback there. And also don't forget, we have swag now. We have merch. We got links below if you guys want to pick up a T-shirt to look great and support the channel at the same time. I'm not going to beat it up too much more than that. Zach, thanks, man. Hell yeah. You guys have all been great. We'll catch you guys later. Bye bye, puppets. End of the week at the revival house. Next month's theme, you gotta figure it out. Italian zombies are polished short. A slasher with a knife and the girl next door. And one second in, get it all queued up and ready. Hit play in three, two, one. Bye bye, puppets. Zach Pete in a solo cup man. Goodness, camera's love and Josh and Scott failed and Riverman's bay. Bye bye puppets. Sounds good, like this country used to. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we see our cases, Mr. P. Silver. Oh, what's up, guys? 
This is Mr. PC Everson. What's going on? I heard you guys were doing uh, listener songs, and uh, I was just uh, I was thinking about uh, Zach and uh, and, and Ari and, and, and Mac and Zach and, and, and uh, uh, oh yeah, Riverman. And uh, I just uh, I just had to write a song for you. Because you guys are playing songs on your show now, right? Because I, I worked really hard on this. Okay, here it goes. Chuck is my favorite, and the critters, yeah, with vile hell, vile hell. I know I did some work, I know, but uh, I don't know. I, I love you guys, bye. Vival House 2019, y'all. Mmm, that sounds like fire, like this country used to. <laughs> 